So now that we've run our descriptive data, we need to run our NOVA. And again, please note that here, these are our participant pit numbers identifying the participants. And um, this is the direction of rotation and each participant part participated in each condition, the understated condition, the accurate condition, and the overstated condition. So we're going to go up here to ANOVA and we're going to select the repeated measures ANOVA. So again, that was ANOVA, repeated measures ANOVA. And now we want, we have a repeated measures factor, RM factor one. So I'm going to put visual feedback. My level one is accurate. Oops, we'll say understated. My level two is accurate. I need a new level, overstated. Now if I had a second factor, a second independent variable, I would put that here, but I don't. So as soon as I click out of that, you see they're all populated here. So now what I need to do is drag and drop these things over here. Make sure it's the correct one. Alternatively, I can highlight it and click the arrow. And so you're gonna see right here, it's gonna populate my information. So here I have my repeated measures ANOVA table. It's my fit for visual feedback. It gives me my degrees of freedom, two and 94. It gives me an F value and it gives me a P value. And here it does say that the test of sphericity indicates that um, the assumption of sphericity is violated. And this happens when the variances um, of the differences between dif the different combinations of your groups aren't equal. It's kind of like the homogeneity, homogeneity of variance for uh, between subjects ANOVA. Um, and because of that, we need to do a certain type of correction. So we're gonna go back over to our data and we're gonna do a greenhouse geyser correction. And that'll be explained more on the Canvas assignment page if you'd like to learn more about that. So now what it does is just make some adjustments. You're still gonna report your degrees of freedom of two and 94. And I'll go over on the assignment page again what those do degrees of freedom mean. Here we have our F value and we have our P value. And you can see that didn't change the F value or the P value at all really. Now we already ran descriptive statistics up here, but you could click this little box here and it will provide you with some as well. And it does give you kind of the important stuff. So now since I have significance, I'm gonna come over here to my post hoc tests and I'm gonna pick one. So I'm gonna pick the Bonferrani. And again, the Sheffy is probably I think the most conservative. Bonferrani is the one I'm just most familiar with for um, a repeated measures design. And so uh, the assignment page also provides a little bit more information on why we chose the Bonferrani postdoc test if you'd like to know. So again, I just clicked the, the test that I wanted to run. We ran the two key, remember, for the between subjects ANOVA. Then I needed to move visual feedback. It was here, I just needed, that's my condition, my factor. And so then it populates it here. And the nice thing about JASP as compared to SPSS is it doesn't repeat all of the comparisons for you. So it tells you that the p-value is adjusted for comparing a family of three, and it gives you understated compared to accurate. This is the mean difference. This isn't the mean. This is the, this is the difference between these two conditions. And then it gives you your p-value, which is 0 0.01, which is less than that 0.05 compares understated to overstated. That's also less than 0.05. And then accurate to overstated. And that is also significant. So it tells you all of your, basically everything is significant here, significantly different. Again, these are the mean differences. This is not what you report in your um, write-up or your table or your figure, okay? These are the mean differences. This is the difference between these two conditions. The mean and the SD or the SE is what you report.